Good morning, everyone. My name is Maricela Leon Barrera, and I'm a librarian at the San Francisco Public Library here in California on the unceded land of the Ramitish Ohlone people. Thank you for tuning in today and, and tuning into our virtual Summer Stride programming. Wherever you're tuning in from, we're so happy you're here with us today. I'm excited to share to this Friday's Nature Boost with you. Nature Booths are presented in partnership with the Golden Gate National Parks Conservancy, the National Park Service, the Presidio Trust, and the San Francisco Public Library for Summer Stride 2020, every Friday at 11 a.m. A huge thanks to all our sponsors who make Summer Stride possible. Pardon for the inter for a little bit of tech difficulties. Okay, here we are. A huge thanks to the many sponsors who make our Summer Stride program possible. We are especially grateful to our partnership with the parks and the weekly Nature Boost program. I'm really excited to share today's program with you all today. We're going on a story walk. What's a story walk, you might ask? A story walk is an interactive reading experience. Read a book while going on a trail or a designated path. The Story Walk project was actually created by Anne Ferguson of Montpellier, Vermont, and developed in collaboration with the Kellogg Hubbard Library. Story Walk is a registered trademark and owned by Mrs. Ferguson. For the past four years, we have featured Story Walks in our parks. Story Walks highlight our special partnership with the national, with the parks and our, and our local publisher, Chronicle Books. In 2017, we featured I Wrote You a Note by Lizzie Boyd at Mountain Lake, and it's back there this summer. So if you go to Mountain Lake, you will actually see that story walk there. In 2018, we featured Her Right Foot, written by Dave Eggers and illustrated by Sean Harris. In 2019, we featured Bikes for Sale, which was written by Zachariah O'Hara at the Presidio Main Post. And this year, it's The Hike by Allison Farrell at the Presidio Promenade. Our guide today is Mike Sun, Community Engagement Specialist from the Presidio Trust, and who will be able to share his favorite place to be, the Presidio. And along with him is Jane Marie, Great Golden Gate National Park Conservancy Community Engagement Program Assistant. She will be filming. Mike will tell us a lot about some in, a lot about the Presidio, interesting facts about places he knows, things he might see along the way, and he will also read The Hike by Allison Farrell. I'm really excited to take this stroll with you today. Let's go, Mike. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Presidio. My name is Mike, and I am so excited to be spending the next 45 to an hour or so with you. I am not here alone in the Presidio National Park. Right behind me is my partner in crime, Jane Marie. Everybody say hello, Jane Marie. She's gonna help us document and um, put things on camera so you can see what is happening around us. This is such a beautiful day in the Presidio. So this is where I am by the main post lawn as you can see things there are lots of kids and adults there are people exercising people biking and this is a good place to fly kite as well so the presidio national park is a pretty new park because when i first came to the united states with the family about 25 years ago this place was still a part of the u.s army it's actually a a military base so it was not a park. Do you think people were welcome to come into a military base? Maybe if you're part of the family and you know, if you're a part of the public, probably not. So about 25 years ago, that's when this military base became a national park. And yet people still think of the Presidio as the army base, as people are not welcome, kids are not welcome, but that is not true anymore. It's 2020 and we want you to come to enjoy your national park because this park belongs to you, belongs to me, belongs to 
everyone. Everybody is welcome here, and we want you to be here if you can. So today we are going to start our story walk, and we are at a pretty um, easy to find location. It's called the Presidio Visitor Center, right across from us. There are some bathrooms. They are the temporary facility, temporary bathrooms for now, because there's actually a big, big park that is being created. It's called Tunnel Tops, and I will show you the construction site. Um, once that park is gonna be opened up, and we can actually go from the visitor center down to this another beautiful place called Tracy Field. It's just gonna open this entire area up so more people can come, more people can enjoy more easily. All right. So say if you come to the Presidio Visitor Center, oh, actually right before you um, head outside the door, say if you are planning a trip to see the story walk, um, there are a few things that's really helpful to plan ahead. One is if you are, if you've been living in San Francisco or the Bay Area, you know, it gets cold out here. It gets hot. It gets windy. <laughs> so please dress like an onion. I brought two jackets with me. Uh, I don't have them right now because, you know, I got here since this morning. I, I realized the weather is nice. T-shirt is fine. So please make sure you have jackets with you. Sunscreen is always nice. You know, I don't like sunburn. And water. Make sure you have plenty of water. That's very important as we go on a hike like the story. And what else should we bring? Oh, nice, comfortable shoes. Yeah, to protect your feet. You know, ideally, you know, pants that can protect your knees too, because I like to get on the ground. When I see a beetle, when I see something, I want to get closer to it, because I love nature. All right, let's, let's get it started. Let's check this out. So once you come to the Presidio Visitor Center, you're going to come to see um, the first panel, which says, Start your adventure. See? All right, this is the first panel. It says, Start your adventure. It's right at the entrance of the Presidio Visitor Center. And we have a ranger right here doing some tabling. Hey, thank you for having us here. Yeah, we are so excited. Yes. So let's see. This is Allison. She's the author who wrote the story. Oh, what is it called? Let's see. The Hike. Cool. What do I see here? I see some little kids running on the trail with the dog. Huh. Excellent. Ooh, here is the map. So let's see. We are right over here. It says you are here, Presidio Visitor Center. And then all these dots that will get us to the red flag, which says the first panel. Excellent. Looks like we're going to do a hike to get to the first panel of the hike. And then we're gonna keep going and there are more story panels along the way that we're gonna be learning about this really fun and cool story. And then we're gonna end right at here, Tracy Field Overlook. It's gonna be a beautiful spot where you can see this beautiful marsh. This looks like a lake. It's actually a kind of like a saltwater lake in the bay. It's called Tracy Field. Excellent. So let's get ready to roll. We're gonna walk past tunnel tops, you know, this big park land that is hopefully, hopefully will be ready next year, as early as October, hopefully. A project this size usually can have delay because there are so many things happening. So let's see, it gets windy over here. Another thing about the Presidio, so this is the, the construction of tunnel tops. You can see people are working busy we're gonna have picnic tables here we're gonna have this is gonna be a huge park that's gonna go down closer to the san francisco bay we're gonna have picnic tables different areas i'm gonna show you a cool spot because you can actually see a poster so this is tunnel tops and maybe in the description later um we can have this link so people so you all can check it out it's a little loud. We got lots of activity. Check this out. So I don't know if you can see, there is a kind of circular um, area over there. It's going to be a fire pit area. And hello. And you can see this poster. That's what that area is going to look like. 
there's an actual fire pit in the middle. And then um, there are seatings here. It's kind of sheltered because you can get windy out here. So that's going to be one of the cool areas where you are welcome to enjoy. Sorry about the noise. Construction workers are working very hard. Look at that excavator. Yeah. It's really neat to see the construction site and, and know that very soon this will be a park that families can enjoy. Yeah, thank you for that. And I want to say hello um, to my wife, Ealing. Hello. And my daughter, Luna, who's three and a half. She's watching right now. Hey, Luna. And my two and our two month old younger daughter. Hi, Rana. I just want to say hi. Luna goes to school um, right behind us in the Presidio. And we used to drive by this tunnel top project area and she will be looking out for the excavators every morning sometimes we see one sometimes we see two working yeah she is excited by the time she's going to be about five the, hopefully the park will be ready there's going to be a giant playground um once once this is finished we get to walk down yeah it, you can be a toddler you can be in elementary school middle school or high school or even adults like myself they are different um, structures, different places that you can be playing. It's super cool. I am so excited. The reason why this new project is called Tunnel Top is because it's right above the tunnel. Yeah. It's kind of like a bridge over the tunnel where people can walk on and there are places to see, places to sit, different plants, different nature, just more space for people to enjoy. All right, you can see it right behind us. Another view. It's gonna get a little windy here. So we're about five minutes away to the first panel, to the beginning of the story walk called The Hype. So once again, my name is Mike. I and my family immigrated to San Francisco about 25 years ago. And I actually grew up in this Presidio National Park when I was 16 in high school. I started actually to work at CC Field, which is, you know, that salt marsh. And that was when it was first um, being, being restored. Oh, so I want to show you something. As we're walking, keep looking out for these circular cir um, stickers. Yeah, they're on the ground. It's a story walk. Just keep following these circular stickers on the ground. Sometimes they're on the wall. Yeah, that will that that means you are on the right track to um to the exciting story walk. So I came to the Presidio as an intern, as a high school student intern, and I helped planting the plants. You know, helping to to make habitats for animals. I love nature, I always love nature. And I just, I, I felt so inspired by this beautiful place. We're still, actually a lot of people still don't know about, you know, which is unfortunate because we have so much, this is your part. So if you can, we hope that maybe you can come, you know, this weekend, or you can come once Tunnel Top is ready for you, or you can come at any time. This is a national park. It's your park. So let me ask you this. If it's your park, do you think you have to pay to get into your park? Thumbs up if you think you have to pay. Thumbs down if you think you don't have to pay. If you're not sure in the middle, hmm, if it's your park, do you have to pay? Thumbs down. You don't have to pay. This is your park. It's free. You just have to get here. <laughs> All right, so we're walking along the freeway. So it's a little bit noisy here. This is part of the freeway. Excellent, we're getting closer. Oh, what is this on the ground? This is a sticker. It looks like a wolf. Is that a wolf? We actually don't have any wolves in California or in the Presidio. What we have is coyotes. They look like wolves, they're smaller, and we do have one family living in this national park. So what's cool is that not only people come here, people work here, people actually live here, but lots of nature, wildlife, 
plants, butterflies, coyotes, they actually also live here. So this is really, in my opinion, more than just a park. You know, people actually live here. They have a life here, including nature. Yeah, hopefully, um, once we start the story, we get, we get to explore more of nature. We get to go on hikes. We get to learn new things. We get to look at new things. And if you can come here, you get to smell new things. You actually get to feel new things, hopefully. Yeah. All right. We are actually getting closer. We're about halfway to our first story walk panel. And we're actually getting closer to another cool area of the Presidio National Park. It is the U it is the National Cemetery. Because remember I told you about the Presidio as an old military army base. So we have lots of soldiers, lots of people who help, say nurses too. Um, they were here helping this army base and this is where they're resting now. Once they this um, passed on because it's been a military base for over a hundred years. It's been a long time. And if you recall in the beginning of today, of this video, Marcella mentioned that this was part of our indigenous a lonely a lonely land. Can we say Ohlone together? Ohlone, because I need practice. Ohlone. So Ohlone, they are the first people that we know of that live here in the Bay Area. And the Ohlone Indians, you know, even though we call them by one name, it's actually consists, that includes like, I don't know, 40, 50 different, different people. Yeah, different culture practices you know, different languages. So even though we're just calling them Ohlone, we do recognize there are all kinds of Ohlone here in the Bay Area. And they've been here for thousands of years before anyone that we know of came to this place, which is the park now. Yeah, lots of cars. Make sure you stay on the sidewalk. Stay safe. Yeah. I love this cemetery. It's so beautiful. Do you think you can get in? Look at that fence. Oh, we just walked past the entrance. So the entrance is right there. You can actually walk in. It is a national cemetery. It means it is open to the public. It's really well maintained by the staff working at the national cemetery. Yeah, we got families and friends, you know, visiting their loved ones, their relatives. And yes, you can go in. Yeah, you are welcome to go in. There are bathrooms you can use in there. And we do well, um, we do encourage you to stay on the main pathway, not to walk on the grasses, because we do want to pay respect to the people that are resting here. Yeah. Excellent. So where was where was I? Let's let's see. We talked about the military cemetery. Talk about national park. Let's see. Oh, you, I see another sticker. Yeah, go ahead, Marcella. Oh, I was saying you were telling us a little bit about the Ohlone peoples and how they were yes. there, one of the first inhabitants. And it's Thank been you. really great to see the, the, the clues as we go along the path to the story walk. So if families are, yeah. are on the path, as long as they see those little clues, the little circles, they, they are on the right path. Exactly. Once again, you know, I'm kind of taking my time to talk and walk at the same time. It's going to take at least five minutes between the visitor center to our first panels of story walk. Yeah, so the, the native Ohlone's, do you think they're here today still? Yes? No? Maybe so? Yeah, that's another trick question. They are actually, yes, they are still here. They are walking among us. They use smartphones. They drive around just like you and I. If you look up on the internet of the, the historic drawings of Ohlone's, you're going to see them, you know, 
wearing different types of clothing and um, like um, um, navigating the bay on on chili boats. Yeah, they used to do that. That's that's their way of life. They gather food seasonally. They move with nature. They live here. And today they are still here. We have them in San Francisco. We're having the East Bay. We have them all around. You can't really tell because they look just like you and I. Yeah. I know a few local Ohlone's from Monterey and to the East Bay. They are wonderful people. They speak wonderful languages. One of the languages at the East Bay is called Chichenio. It sounds beautiful. My friend Vince Pandina, he, he speaks that language and I learned a little bit from him and it's just beautiful. Yeah, if you have a chance, check it out. Check it out, our Ohlone folks. And then later on, actually, the Spanish colonists arrived about 240 years ago-ish. Yeah, this overnight became the Spanish military post. They named it the Presidio 240 years ago. And the name stuck. That's why we still call this place the Presidio. Yeah, years later, um, um, the Mexican um, government actually took over this area and it became part of Mexico. Yeah, did you know San Francisco used to be a part of Mexico for about 20 years? Yeah, around 1820s, oh, 200 years ago, exactly. Yeah, this was Mexico. <laughs> We're walking in Mexico, pretty cool. I don't need to take a plane to fly there um, 200 years ago. I'm right where I needed to be. And then about 1840s, that's when the US Army took over and this became California, became uh, the U.S. Army base. All right. Mike, and then could, fast forward, yes. Mike, could you share why it's such a strategic, was, why it was a place of such a strategic interest? For yeah, the because- Spaniards and, 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 later, and then later on the United States military? For sure, the bridge was not here, but this is the mouth of the Golden Gate, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> the bay. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Golden Gate, and we are at the entrance of the San Francisco Bay. And this bay is so important because when gold was first discovered, we people needed a way to sell and trade gold. And at a, at a big, big world um, scale, this Golden Gate is so important, allowing ships to go out and in, you know, suddenly... Um, a sleepy little town, you know, that was full of fishermen in South San Francisco. Um, the economy picked up. People came here from worldwide, including my heritage, you know, the, you know, people from China. They came over here and then they wanted to be a part of this dream of, you know, pursuing more. Yeah. So this is a very important place. Yeah, that's cool. I like thinking of the Golden Gate. It's, it's like our doorway, right? It's our doorway to... Yeah our state and to our city um it's it's the gate it's like if you come in and and we, we welcome you here yeah and people still today still people from all over the world still come to the san francisco bay yeah and we have Excellent. such a beautiful beautiful doorway look at that bridge right there yeah it's a beautiful day all right so we are at our first panel existing to do right now i think is if you made if you made it here from the visitor center i would recommend you take out your bottle of water and then do a cheer celebratory cheers yeah we made it drink some water with your friends and family and then let's get it started let's see what we got here i'm so excited the story walk once again it's called the hike we have a picture of allison she's the author she actually lives that way. If you drive for maybe 10 hours <laughs> in a car nonstop, maybe I'll get to where she lives in Oregon, which is a beautiful state, lots of trees. Let's see. Let me get to a better angle. All right. So I got some numbers. Story walk length, it's about half a mile. Time to allow about 30 minutes once you get here. You know, for the entire experience, I would recommend an hour for you and the families to come. Yeah, an hour would be good. Number of panels, we got 19 
different story panels to look forward to. Excellent. All right, start your adventure. The arrow points this way. So let's go. Let's see what we got. Wow, we got three panels already. Okay, let's see it. We are going on a hike. Huh, who, who are we? Let's see. We have, she seems like the oldest girl in the group. She wears really cool blue glasses. Cool, I have blue glasses too. She has, she likes maybe pink. She's got some pink on her pants. She's holding a book, maybe a notebook that's pink. Cool, Luna likes pink too, my older daughter. She has a flag on her back and of a, of a bird. And guess what? This girl's name is Ran. And Ran is actually a type of bird as well, a small bird. I wonder if that's a Ran. Cool. And then we have another girl named Elle. She's wearing a green dress. She's running. I think they're all running. I wonder where they're running to. All right, this is Elle. And then we have the youngest girl of the group. Her name is Hattie. Cool, she's holding a yellow bag, huh? Backpack, she wears a backpack and she's holding a red leash of a, ooh, of a dog. What, what is the dog's name? Bean, that is such a cool, cute name. Huh, that's Bean. So the four of them are going on a hike. A hike is a long walk. It's a long walk. Let's see, what do we got here? We got some mountain chickadees. Cool. We don't have the mountain chickadees, but we do have chestnut back chickadees in the Presidio and in San Francisco, actually in the Bay Area. Yeah. And I wonder if we will hear some today. The, the reason why they're named chickadees is because they sound like chickadee, chickadee, chickadee dee, chickadee dee dee. That's why they're called chickadees. There's a bumblebee. Excellent. Next to a flower, I am not surprised somehow. This plant is called Mullen. Cool. Whoa, what is this? There's a fox. It's a red fox. Wow. Friends, do you think we have we have foxes in the presidio? Hmm. Do you think so? Hmm. Yes? No? Maybe? Hmm. They are really hard to find. They are really hard to see. But yes, we do have foxes. And I have not heard that we have a red fox here. Lately, but 20 years ago, I remember um, people have seen red foxes here in the Presidio. Today, we have more gray foxes. They look very similar, and they are actually really good climbers. Let's see what we got. We got some lupin. It says Buck Mountain this way. I wonder if they are running that way. Huh. We also got some snowberries. Oh, we do have snowberry. We, we have this plant in the Presidio. Yeah. And their berries are really white and pale, look like snow. And we have a piece of feather. It says Stellish J. Oh, what color is this? Looks like it's blue. Excellent. I love that you highlighted oh. the fox, Mike, because a few years ago, there was actually The Fox's Wish. It was a book that was featured at Land's End as a story walk. Cool. So some of, yeah. our, listen, some of our viewers might remember that. Yeah, Land's End is actually not too far away from the Presidio. Yeah, it's pretty close. It's pretty close. Actually, the Coyote family that we have, the one family we have in the Presidio, they will go to Land's End. That is part of their home, too. Yeah, so you can think of the Presidio as, and Land's End as somewhat connected, like a big home for lots of uh, different wildlife animals and plants. Yeah, thank you for saying that. Excellent. I want to shout out to my friend, Sabrina. She actually helped us. Um, she, she's asking some questions for us. Only a few of these species, which are animals and plants, the different types, can be found in the Presidio. You might spot a scrub jay eating snowberries. Cool. Bumblebees pollinating some lupin flowers. That's, those are the lupin flowers. There's a bumblebee. I wonder if it's going to come over here. Maybe. We will see. Hopefully, we'll see some bumblebees. All right. Let's go to the next one. Pop quiz. What are their names? Ran, L, and Patty. And of course, Bean. 
Okay, I might forget their name. So please help me remember. My memory is terrible. All right. It's our favorite thing to do. <gasps> There's a Stella Shay. There's a Stella Shay. Wow. Two days ago, I came here. Actually, I heard a Stella Shay. I hope to see one later today. We will see. All right, so they've been walking on this trail on a hike. There's Rand, there's L, Hattie, and Bean. Let's see what we got here. Are things hiding? Are things hiding here, friends? Let's see. What is this? Let me see. Oh, it doesn't have a name. It looks like a squirrel to me. Hmm, that's a beautiful stripe on the face. We got some ferns. We have ferns in the Presidio. They like to live by trees. They don't like to have too much sun. So y'all often find them in the forest. Whoa, what is that? In the hole, there are some owlets, some baby owls. That is so cool. And we have all kinds of owls in the Presidio as well, big and small. All right. Whoa, okay, this is an animal that we don't have in the Presidio. It's a porcupine. This is one of the spines, one of the quills. Yeah, we don't have a porcupine in the Presidio. So where she, where the author is, Allison, she, she drew and wrote the story. Um, in Oregon, there are a lot of porcupines there. That is super cool. And we got some mushrooms in a shape that is very interesting. What shape is this? Huh, is that a square? Triangle? Hmm, looks like a baby, it's a circle. That is so interesting. Fairy rings, mushrooms. They look like they're from the storybooks. That is so cool. All right. Let's check out what we got here. Hey, wait for me. What is her name? Her name is Hattie. That's right. Hattie is yelling, wait for me. Because L, B, and Ren, they are running. Huh. That reminds me of me. I'm usually that child that's in the back because I get distracted by so many things that my friends will usually run ahead with my family. So that's usually me. That reminds of me. And what is under her feet? There's a little animal. Let's see. Chipmunk nest. That's a chipmunk maybe. Wow, that's a squirrel looking animal that lives beneath the ground. Look. Look at its home. That is so cool. It has different walkways. And maybe that, is that a bedroom that another chipmunk is sleeping in? That is so cool. Wow. Huh, I wonder where the bathroom is. Hmm. Oh, I see some food. Maybe those are food storage. Maybe those are food storages. Maybe the kitchen. Or could they be poop? I don't know. Could be bathroom. Could be kitchen. I am not too sure because I'm a human, not a chipmunk. I don't know, I have to ask the chipmunk. What do you think? All right, let's see. In the beginning, we run like maniacs. <laughs> maniacs means like crazy people. In the beginning, everyone has lots of energy. They're just running. You know what, hopefully they're gonna wait for Hattie. She's falling behind. Hey, although she has some beautiful flowers over here to look at. Hopefully she'll catch up. We shall see. Let's see. What do we have here? Old man's beard lichen grows just about everywhere. Can you see any on the nearby tree branches? Let's see. So that is the old man's beard. It's a really special, um, it's actually two, at least two different special living things. It's, think of a mushroom and a kind of like seaweed, but not from the sea, a seaweed that lives on the land. So it's two living things living together. But that's what a lichen is. Yeah, because imagine a mushroom, which is a fungus, lichen, a seaweed that lives on land. They liken each other. 
with the lichen. I hope that makes sense. It's a really cool um, living thing. <laughs> they live together. Let's see. Do we have any? Do we have any old man's beard? JM, you need to help me out. Do we see any old man's beard? I don't see any, but I have seen them in the presidio on trees. I have seen them many, many times, and they are really cool looking. You, they're actually safe to touch. You can actually feel them. They feel pretty interesting. They're kind of like stiff brush, kind of that's dry. So we are on a trail. This is a multi-use trail. Hi, JM. And we have joggers. We have people walking dogs. We also have bikers. So please, one, stay on the trail and be be aware of your surroundings because a bike may be coming by. Coming by. So that's something to be aware of. All right, let's go. It's nice to hear that there's a couple ways we can enjoy the story walk. We can either walk or we can bring our bike and make sure we bring our helmets. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, we got some trees. So what you're going to notice is the Presidio National Park has lots of trees. And these were... Originally, these were all planted by army soldiers. Yeah, they wanted to make this place prettier. That's why they planted the trees. And the trees can also protect them from being seen by the enemies. So for army um, reasons, they actually, they also need the trees for, for protections. And the trees are here today. We have like 60,000 trees. So many different trees. You're like, Mike, all these trees look the same to me but they are actually different types of trees. With this one, one of the most common ones, um, cypress. And this is a pine tree next to it. How can I tell that the pine tree has lots of pine cones and also the leaves are needles, pine needles. I'm sure you have seen them before. Cypress has smaller um, leaves. And then we have lots of eucalyptus trees. Oh, there's one right here. Yeah, eucalyptus trees, they have big leaves. And they smell really good. Yeah, my favorite cough drop flavor is um, eucalyptus flavor. I think they smell smell good. Are the eucalyptus trees native to the area? Oh, that's a good question. What do you all think? Hmm, eucalyptus tree, eucalyptus. Who eats eucalyptus? Hmm, which, what kind of animal hmm, that you may have seen at a zoo? Koalas, they eat eucalyptus. And where are koalas from? Are they from San Francisco? Are they from- Never seen any here. <laughs> yeah, they're from Australia, which is really far away. So good question. Eucalyptus trees are not from here. Humans, we brought them over here. The army soldiers, they knew about how fast these trees grow. They wanted trees to grow fast. So they brought these eucalyptus trees. Oh, there's a hog over flying. Looks like a red tail hog. Hopefully we'll see more. And that hog is actually missing some feathers. So that tells me it's a younger hog that is growing new feathers. Yeah, excellent. So yeah, eucalyptus trees are not from San Francisco. They're from Australia. Um, cypress trees, they're not from here. They're from more of a South, Southern California thing. And then also Monterey pine trees are also a little bit south from here. So humans, we brought them here. Good question. Oh, we're at panel number four. Let's see what we got here. Until a ripe patch of thimbleberries slow us down. What are they doing? Aw, Luna, are you watching this right now? Because this is what we do. We're not, we have not picked thimbleberries, which are these beautiful red berries, but we have picked plenty of blackberries in the studio and in different parks. We like to go to McLaren parks too. Oh, can you hear me? Okay, excellent. All right. We can hear you. Sweet, yeah, I'm using my, my Bluetooth um, earphones so they can run all the battery. Let me know if you can't hear me. I will switch to a different test. So these are simple berries. They're just eating. Ran. That's elm. Oh, look, 
cat is over there. She's working on her um, symbol berries that are high up there. She's smart. You know why? Because have you noticed, like, we have dogs here in the Presidio, too, and dogs can kind of pee. <laughs> they like to pee everywhere. The berries lower to the ground to be peed on by other dogs. So I think she, maybe she knows that. That's why she's going for the taller ones. Maybe they're cleaner. There's a little chipmunk <laughs> jumping over there. That's why she brought a yellow sack. She brought a bag. Maybe Patty knew about the berries. Maybe she's putting them in there. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe. You can hear the fire truck. If you get to the beginning of the story walk at the visitor center, right next to it is a fire station. So in the Presidio, we do have a fire station here. It's almost like a, a city within a city, like a town here. We have a lot of things. Oh, here is a Western toad. We don't have Western toad in the Presidio, but we do have frogs. I love frogs. Yeah, I love frogs a lot. They're my favorite animals. So they're eating berries. They're being slowed down. Let's see. You might spot these berries in the Presidio. Yes, we do have simple berries in the Presidio. That is true. Wildlife means animals that live in nature. They rely on berries and other plants for food. Be sure to leave them for wildlife to enjoy. Oops. Okay. So I guess I can't be eating too much, too much, too many berries. <laughs> I think it's okay to eat some, but you know, let's not eat them all. Let's share. You know, this is everyone's park, including animals. So let's share. Let's share the trail. Let's share the road. Let's share the berries too. All right. What do we got here? L teaches us how to make leaf baskets. Wow. We don't have thimble berries here, but if we come across one, we can actually make a leaf basket. And actually, the author, Allison, she made a video reading the same story. And in that video, she actually made a basket. So maybe we can provide a link in the description below later on, and then you can check it out to see how to make the basket. Definitely. She was, if uh, folks go to our library YouTube channel and go to our Summer Stride playlist, you can see Allison making a leaf basket. Excellent. Thank you, Maricela. So they're asked, oh, so let's see, Ran is, oh, L is teaching Ran and Hattie. They're like, like this, L, is that, is that how you do it? She's like, yup, that's how you make it. What is Bean doing over there? She is sniffing. I mean, he or she is sniffing in a hole. Hmm, getting into trouble. Hmm, not surprised. Here in the Presidio, you will find a rich variety of trees. More than 60,000 trees. We have a lot of trees. Douglas fir will be rare. However, you might see them up in the marine headlands. Marine Headlands is basically the place you cross the Golden Gate Bridge. That area is called the Headlands, and we have some Douglas fir. And actually, during the winter holidays around Christmas, if you are family, or if you have seen Christmas trees, Douglas fir is actually a very common tree, a, a very common type of tree that is used as Christmas trees. Yeah, fun fact. Let's keep walking down. Oh, there are some benches. If you get a little tired, you can feel free to sit on the benches. And here is our next panel. What panel number is this? Number six. All right, what do we have here? We may have eaten too many berries. Is that possible? Oh. That is hilarious. They are just, they've eaten too much. They are collapsing. I thought we were saving some for later. Mm. Yeah, I think um, too late. They finished all. Cool. Oh, My and there is a woodpecker. Yes. Mike, I think you're right. I think Hattie did save some for later. <laughs> Whereas Rand yeah. and Paul, they, <laughs> they ran through the berries they picked. 
Yeah, she's smart. She is smart. She thinks about not just now, but also in the future too. She's smart. Oh, there's the biker just biking right next to us. All right. You see this building over here? That's part of the old military buildings by the US Army. They are still here. The buildings are still here. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Let's see, panel number seven. The hike gets steep and the trail narrows. Whoa, look, there's a porcupine climbing on the tree. There's a big hole in the tree. L is saying, ah, Patty, how did you get up there so fast? And she, Hattie's like, boo, she's so fast. And she is holding a dog too. Wow, these two are quick. And there's Ran, she is making her way up there. Wow. Right next to us, there's another story panel. Let's see. Okay, uh-oh. What's going on? I see maps are out. What does that mean? We get lost. Uh oh. <laughs> They're looking at the map. Hmm. Which way is north? Ren says, pretty sure we're not supposed to cross a river yet. Huh. Okay. Good luck. I hope they find their way. All right. I'm glad they came prepared with maps. Yeah, yeah. Nowadays, adults have cell phones and we usually have, you know, a map in the phone. So that can help too. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, panel number nine. Let's see. Look, they're all on a tree. Patty says, do we go left after the berry patch? Ren says, right, I think. And Elle is asking, oh, she's actually taking off her notebook. She's, she's asking, hey, Ren, what's another word for blue? Huh, I don't know if there's another word for blue. Ren says, azure, cerulean, cobalt. Wow, she is so smart. She knows so many different words for blue. I thought blue is just blue. Cool, I learned something too. And check out Ren's note sketchbook. <laughs> Patty always finds the route. And this is a bird's eye view of Patty, which means you're looking from the top like a bird in the sky. Cool, wow. That is so cool. All right. You can feel, um, there's not a lot of wind right now. We are kind of sheltered here. Yeah, it feels good. It's not super windy here. It actually gets a little hot when it's not windy here sometimes. For our viewers interested in learning how to make their own sketchbook for when they go on their hikes, they should tune in next Friday. We're gonna be making sketchbooks with Alice and Farrell. That is so cool. Don't miss that. All right, we're coming up to panel number 10. Let's see what we got here. We're halfway there. Oh, Bean is getting that watch. Almost, almost, almost got it. Ren is asking, huh, who made these? Look at these, these are called animal tracks. They're the footprints of animals. Huh, well, you can see a little, little insect little fly or something on the panel. That is so cool. And look at this. Elle is, oh, she is sketching. She's sketching a snail. Wow. Yeah, it's important to get on the ground sometimes, you know, so you can actually see different living things. Cool. And don't forget to look up too. I just heard a hawk. Yeah. Make sure you look all around. You might be able to find things. Yeah, look at this old wall. I mean, look at this. So friends, this is a different type of lichen. Yeah, 
that's not the old man's beard, but it's a different type of lichen. We also have mosses living here. I'm sure, you know, if we look around, we can find some bugs too. Oh, here is our next panel. A deer walks past being sneezes. <laughs> Achoo! Oh, there's the deer. We used to have deer in the Presidio. Today, you got to leave San Francisco to find deer. We have it in Daly City, which is south of San Francisco. We have it in the Headlands too, which is north. So if you leave San Francisco, um, not too far away, you can find deer. Cool, Western tiger swallowtail butterfly. This one we have in the Presidio. We have tiger swallowtails. They are beautiful. They are huge. They are maybe half the size of my hand. They are really big. They like water. So if you get closer to say a pond or a lake, you might be able to find some tiger swallowtails right now. Yeah. We're getting to one of my favorite places. So these are the horse stables. I don't know if we have the horses here. So we have US Park Police and they have horse patrols. So they keep horses here. So maybe we'll go up there in a bit to see if there are horses. Yeah. But each of this, these buildings, I think they can keep up to like 100 horses. We don't have 100 horses today. I don't think I can be wrong. I have not seen that many horses in the Presidio, but a long time ago, there used to be lots of horses in there. Panel number 12, the deer vanishes so quick. We wonder if it was really there. Huh, I swear to God, a deer was just right there and it's gone. This is, this is something I felt in nature. You know, when you see a bird flying by, it was so close to you, you got a good look at it, and then the next moment it's gone. It feels kind of magical. Yeah, we actually have a lot of dragonflies flying around here. Yeah, this is a really cool place. You see lots of sand. You're like, wait, are we next to a to the ocean? We're not. San Francisco actually is um, about a third or 40% on sand. So it's actually just a part of where we are. Pretty cool. Let's see, the rain, a light rain comes and goes. The birds are happy. We listen to them chirp and chatter in the trees. Cool, there's a chickadee flying over and there's a bluebird in the tree. Hattie is asking, this is the river we were looking for, right Hattie? Wait, what's her name? But oh, this L, L is asking, this is the river that we're looking for, right? And Hattie says, yes. Cool, check out their sketchbook. That is beautiful. Cool. You can see people jogging, people biking. All right. Sometimes you can see swallows here too. They can, they, they swallows, they like to eat insects, like dragonflies. They are actually quite a few dragonflies flying around. They're too small, maybe for the camera to capture, but they are dragonflies here. And swallows, they like to catch dragonflies. They can eat them. And why do you think dragonflies are here? Dragonflies actually, they, they eat insects as well, smaller than them, like bumblebees. So there's gotta be some bees over here. What do you think the bees are here? Hmm. Could it be the flowers? We learned about bees a few weeks ago um, with, uh, with one of our, our Wednesday programs. And we know that bees look for pollen. Yeah, and pollens are found in flowers. Cool. Yeah, the, the program was with Fog City Gardener and then we learned all nice. about bees. Cool. So I'm looking at the horse stable and sometimes there are horses just out here in the stables. So if you're lucky, maybe you'll get to see some horses. 
All right, panel number 14. I see rainbow, I see waterfall. Patty gets tired and Elle offers to carry her. <laughs> and they're right underneath a waterfall. Guess what? Shh, it's so loud. Patty says, I can't hear you. Ren says, I said 30 minutes to the top. And they are going to the top. Oh, there's a raven. We actually have ravens in the Presidio too. They're usually up in the sky. Keep looking up. If you see a big black bird that's like a hawk, but it's black completely, that is a raven. They're pretty cool. And they sound like this. They really sound like that. <laughs> All right. We're looking at some freeways. A lot of these cars are actually driving towards the Golden Gate Bridge. They're heading to the Marine Headlands, which is the place you can find what? What can you find in the Marine Headlands? Let's see, duck fur, maybe if you're lucky, and deer, yes. We have deer in the Headlands. Do you I think we have coyote? Yeah. I know I've spotted some hollow trees in the Marine Headlands. Cool. All right. Number 15. Wow, they are climbing on top of a rock or something on the mountain. Wow. <laughs> Ren ended up carrying Patty and Elle. She's like, I can't do this much longer. Yeah, she's carrying two people. And Patty's saying, get it up. <laughs> Keep going. I'm having fun. <laughs> By the time they got there, right over everyone. Ren is gone. And then they were climbing up, climbing up. Oh, Elle is saying, it's getting chilly. It's actually getting cold. Yeah, the Presidio can get a little chilly too once the wind picks up. All right. So we're going to go right underneath these freeways. And then we're going to come out to the other side. And then we are getting closer to the end of the story walk. It's such a beautiful day. This is actually a really cool place because I'm gonna show you. Yeah, once we get underneath these freeway like bridges, and then I don't know if you can hear. Ow! Ow! They are echo. If you scream underneath the bridge in the right angle, sometimes there's echo. It's super fun. Wow, you can see Alcatraz too. There's an island right about there. That's Alcatraz. Alcatraz is actually part of the Golden Gate National Park. Just like the Presidio, just like Marine Headlands, just like Muir Woods, Ocean Beach, to name a few, we're all part of the same national park. They're just different locations. Yeah, and we can see a little bit of Chrissy Field too. Chrissy Field is that little pond looking thing that's kind of blue. It's a salt marsh. Oh, wind is picking up a little bit, I can feel. We are getting close to the end of the story walk. That's the Christie Field Overlook. And how did you know if you're on the right track? Follow the round stickers and not the coyote. <laughs> when in doubt, look for those round stickers on the ground. 
We can hear a little bit of the wind. Is it more windy under the under the bridges? A little bit, yeah. I I think so. A little bit. One, yeah. It's actually it's, really calm today. Yeah. If you look at the trees, they're not really moving much. If they move it, a lot, that means there's a lot of wind. Yeah, we just hear a little bit of it, but it's good to know that it can get windy, so we should bring something to layer on in case it Absolutely. is it does get cold. Yeah. Friends, remember, dress like an onion, layers. If it's too hot, you can take them out. If it's too cold, you can put them back on. I like that tip, dress like an onion. Yeah, like an onion. <laughs> All right. We got trash cans. We got blue for recycling. We got the regular for landfill. Excellent. Trash cans are always good. Oh, here we go. These are the last few panels. Let's see. Number 16. Take a moment to smell the air and listen to the sounds in the park. What plants can you smell? Can you hear birds singing or the ocean waves nearby? Cool. Panel number 17. We did it. They actually got to the top here at the Christie Field Overlook. Yes, you did it. What can you see in the distance? Let's see. I can see once again Alcatraz, the beautiful San Francisco Bay, Christie Field. I see a, um, that kind of round dome that's kind of small over there. That is Palace of Fine Arts, and there are lots of buildings from the downtown. I definitely see a big grassy lawn that's also part of Christie Field. Good place. It's really windy, usually. Good place to fly your kite as well. Lots of trees. I see JM. JM sees me. More trees, freeway, cars, benches. And I see my friend Damien. Shout out to Damien. He is our friend who who helped put up these panels every summer for you, for me, for everyone. Hey, Damien. <laughs> he is actually um, restocking one of our, yeah, our Presidio um, maps. At the end of the story walk, we have the adventure maps. Check this out. This All is right. a free map. Yeah. They are different locations in the Presidio that you should check out. Yeah. The church where the other story walk is. Excellent. And this is not the only story walk. We have more. Yeah, we have another one at Mountain Lake. Mm -hmm. I wrote you a note. That is my family favorite. Luna asked me to take her there all the time. We've done it at least five times. <laughs> at least five times in the yeah. past month, probably. <laughs> I am not joking. The hike is the story we're reading right now. And then, yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah, so these are here to pick up at the end of your adventure on the story walk. Cool, thank you so much, Damien. You're welcome. Excellent, bye Damien. We're almost done with the story. Let's see, we we're at number 17. Oh, here's number 18, we got two more to go. You can find the coast paintbrush flowers along all, along all of the California coast. Ooh, do you spot any flowers nearby? So these are beautiful red Indian paintbrush flowers. My friend Yakuta from Lens End, she actually did, um, she has a video talking about Indian paintbrush at Lens End. Yeah, you should check it out. Towards the end of the video, I think she talks about Indian paintbrush. She even shared a story about this really beautiful flower. She does. We if our, if our viewers want to see Yakuta at Land's End, that is, was our, ju our June, 12th start, uh, June 12th nature boost. Yeah, I work with Yakuta. She is a phenomenal storyteller and she's also an amazing person. Oh, here is our last panel. Sorry about the sun. It's a little bit hard to see, but once you come here in person, it's going to be easier. It looks oh, it's good. Actually, yeah, cool getting dark you can see all kinds of stars in the sky Ooh, are they heading home is this the end of the hike i see moon is out 
a chipmunk is saying goodbye. Let's see. Whether reaching the end of a hike, a book, a school project, or going to another kind of adventure, it can be fun to achieve something. Have you ever accomplished something that you're proud of? Yeah, if you come here and if you do this hike, you definitely have accomplished something because yeah, it's fun and it's actually, yeah, it's, it's gonna, you're gonna sweat if it's hot like today. <laughs> I'm definitely sweating. And hopefully y'all get a chance to experience something new, to see something new, and you can share the stories that you have learned with your family and friends. All right, thank you so much for spending your hour with me. I feel like with us, I feel like it has gone by way too quickly. I can probably spend another hour out here, but thank you for spending your time with us and we shall see you again next week. <laughs>